Can you talk us out, please? Our uh, new topic is called electronics. Okay. So what we're going to do today is I'm going to uh, give you a bit of background as to what I, an electronic system is. Every electronic system is the same. It is the same components. Okay. And then what we're going to do is when we finish going over that, the different types of components, we're going to go into computers and I'm going to show you how to use a software package called Yenka. Now, Yenka, um, you can download that at home, and use it at home to help you with this topic. It's free to use at home. Okay, and I've got a link on the website, I've put it up against the page post as well, so you can get it at home and use it at home. Now, every electronic system contains three parts. Okay, it doesn't matter what they are, they contain three parts. And those three parts are an input, a process, and an output. What I write in the board, you can copy it off. Input, process, output. And it always goes like that. Now, if you think of your kind of standard computer, any like computers at the back of the room, like computers I'm using, they all have an input device, they all have some kind of process going on inside, and they have an output device. What is input device? What is an input device on a computer? On a standard PC computer, personal computer, or a laptop, whatever. What is the input device they're using? James? Keyboard. Keyboard. What else? Mouse. Keyboard and mouse. Or, in my case, it could be the Prometheum board, it could be a touchscreen monitor, it could be my phone, any of these things. Now, that's the input device. An input device takes something, something useful, and turns it into electricity. Okay? Now, notice how I'm saying that it's something useful and I'm not considering electricity. So, let's talk about that in a minute. So, input devices take useful energy. So, if I was thinking of a... Uh, so, you hang on, useful energy into electricity. We'll call it electrical. Energy. Now, useful energy in terms of a mouse. What's the useful energy that a mouse has that we are turning into electrical energy? Yes. Energy type of a mouse have. As you move it around, what does that look at? Energy is that? <coughs> kinetic. So a mouse has kinetic energy and we turn that into electrical energy. What can we do with electrical energy? What can we do, a useful thing we can do with electrical energy? Don't know. No idea. Give me something that has electrical energy then. And is it useful? Mm -hmm. A radio. So does a radio use electrical energy? Mm -hmm. Do what? Play music. What? Play music. Play music. Well, in terms of a radio, it has a transmitter and a receiver. The receiver takes the radio waves and turns them into electrical energy. They then amplify them and do things with them, send them to a loudspeaker, which then turns it electrical energy into sound energy and sound energy comes out. Is it electrical energy that's actually playing the music? No, it's not. Think of something more basic. Let's think of a toaster. Okay? Take a toaster, toaster's plugged into your wall, see a piece of bread. You put it in the toaster, you push the switch down. Does the electrical energy make the bread turn into toast, Liam? No. What Bang. does? The heat. The heat. The heat's the part that turns it into toast. It's not electrical energy, but that's an electrical component. That's, that's a piece of electronics. The bread in the electrical energy is going to turn into heat energy. Okay? So electrical energy on its own is not useful at all. It's good at transporting energy around the country. It's good at um, doing calculations with, but it's not useful in any way. So electronics is about turning something useful, whether it's kinetic, sound, heat, or whatever, into electrical energy, doing something with it, like making it bigger, making it smaller, um, making a decision, or doing a calculation, and then pushing it out. When it's an output device, it changes electrical energy to a useful energy. 
And in between here, we've got something doing calculations. Or it could be uh, amplifying it. Or it could be um, transporting it. Any of these things, that's the process part. You think about a computer, you've got an input device, where it's a mouse, a keyboard, you have a processor, which processes information, you've got lots of other things in there. You've also got your memory and everything, your hard drive, but at the end of the day it's a processor, which is processing information, and you have your output devices. What are output devices for a computer PC? Stuart. Output device for a computer. Martha. What's the energy change in a mortar? Let's go. Energy change. Electrical to light. Good. Electrical to light is an energy change. You've done all these and you're using electricity. You know the energy changes. So an output device takes electrical energy and turns it into something useful that we can use every day. Okay? So three types. Input device, process device, output device. We're going to look at a selection of input devices. We're going to look at selection of output devices and we're going to look at process devices in the middle. Come to the earlier one. Ah. So, the first thing we'll look at is output devices and we're going to look at output devices today. But before we do that, we can classify all three of these into two separate subgroups. Okay? Those subgroups are analog and digital. Okay? So, two different subgroups. Let's look at the first one first. We have analog. Analog. You can have analog input devices, analog output devices, or analog process devices. So that could be uh, an input, it could be a process, or it could be an output. Either way, it can be an analog device. Now, an analog device is a device which can be any number of values. An analog watch is a ha watch with hands that constantly move. A digital watch is a watch that has little segments that light up at different times and only ever off or on. Think of anything else that's analog or digital. Radio, yeah. An analog radio. You notice an analog radio. I don't know who's got a digital radio? Yeah, we've got a digital radio. Who's got um preview? Or television? Who does that right? Hands up if you use an aerial in the back. Does anyone use an aerial in the back? Or do you use free view, which is coming through the box? Sky. Yeah. Sky. Right, so, Sky and free view are digital television services. Um, analog services are your standard aerial that you have to tune it in. Okay? Now, if you have a standard television and it's out of tune, what does it look like? What happens, John? It goes fuzzy. You can it goes fuzzy and grey and you get that kind of crackling and the noise goes all funny. What happens when you get a bad signal on Freeview or Sky? What happens with that? No, 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 no. Does it go fuzzy? No, no, no. Oh. It cuts out. Cuts out, exactly. It switches off and on, and you get the wee blocks on the screen. You seen oh, that? Aye. It switches off and on. Now, analog signal is all fuzzy because it's 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 kind of phasing in and out. It's kind of can't quite get on the signal. So it can be a value above it or a value below it. A digital signal can either only ever be off or on. So if it's off, you don't hear it. If it's on, you do hear it. You know what I mean? So it's all ever off or on. So, an analog system can be... So it can be any value. Or any value within a certain number, a certain range. If you were to draw a graph of an analog signal coming from something, then let's make it voltage, for example, over time, it could be any signal that you want. It could be anything. If I was to put that through an oscilloscope, any signal can be any value. If I was to look at the signal of a, of a television station that was not on, on the right channel and look at the signal, it could be shaking all over the place because it's not quite right. It's not on the signal, it's analog. Okay? It can be any value. It's important we know that analog can be any number of values. It can be faster, it can be slower, it can be in between, it can be, it can be half on, half off, it doesn't have to be completely on or completely off. Right? So that's analog. Now normally I would show you an oscilloscope with an analog signal. I think it's better we get into it and look at the components first before we do that. What? 
Yeah. On the board? Yeah. Ash, you drop it on the board? Yeah, it's very easy to drop. Okay, right. Moving on. Digital. You may have a digital input device, a digital process device, and a digital output device. Can only be one of two values. Now these values are as follows. These values are the following. It can only be. Should I lift the head up, please? Off or on. It can be zero or one. It can be low or high. It can be zero volts or five volts. So a digital system can be off or on, low or high, zero or one, zero or five volts. That's what defines a digital system. Digital electronics all run on five volts because they only can be off or on. And it can only be a zero volt or a five volt value. If we to look at a graph of a digital system, like this, Let's put voltage in time. It can only be 0 or 5. It can be 5 for as long as you want, but then it has to go back down. When it goes off again, it goes down to 0. So a digital signal could be off and on, just like that. That's bottom is, the bottom of this is off, the top of this is on. Okay, now we're now going to look at output devices and have a look at the Yanka program.